Hey guys, uh, here's the other message I promised just uh, that there's, this would go into the category of the healing of your book. <laughs> there's uh, uh, there's no bad news in the good news. And so the true meaning of the Satan, the adversary and the Diablos or the devil. And so <clears throat> again, uh, one of my favorite quotes is you know, Bob Proctor. He says where the man's chief delusion is to, to think that the causation of life is on the outside of you, that there's something outside of you rather than within. And if the kingdom's within, if Jesus Christ with this was within, um, uh, then it, everything has to be within. The source of life has to be within. And uh, just some thoughts. The only reason you believe in, a, in an enemy, a Satan, or something bad outside of you is because you were taught that, that uh, uh, there's nothing outside of you causing anything, guys. And it's, as I'll show you, it's just misinterpretations again of of these concepts that the writers of scripture are writing about. And so when you see the Satan, when you see the adversary, when you see the devil, I promise you it's the other man. It's the physical man and the spiritual man. We're all through scripture. It says the spiritual man will supplant or replace the, the physical man. And so it's the other, it's the, the, the anti, it's the opposite. It's the other man. It's the other intimacy within. And even Satan, I'll show you, is is the 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 life, the endless life when you lay down your skin of the passion of God, is to eat of the last covenant meal. Uh, it's the the roar of the lion, like we've talked about, and I'll show you that. We'll go through that scripture um, where it says, uh, "Be sober minded, because the the devil is like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour." It doesn't say that at all. <laughs> it doesn't say that at all. And in fact, you would never that. The, that idea, here's the heart. The heart is so beautiful and profound, and we are so fearfully and wonderfully made. There's no devil or, or, or force outside of you guys. That's outside of God, because everything that is, is, is contained in this container of God, is what the scriptures are writing about. They were writing about the two love covenants, the creative power to create this life and the creative power to create in the unseen, the Satan, the, the other intimacy, the other knowing is literally um, what adversary means, as I'll show you that. And so, there's another intimacy. There's another knowing, the opposite to the the opposite man, the other man, and so all those are just uh, uh, just mis misinterpretations, obviously. But uh, um, the the concept that there's something outside of you that is attacking you, that could somehow destroy you, that if you made a wrong move, it's going to affect your finances, it's going to affect your 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 health. Um, that belief system your heart accepts is real and starts to produce it. In fact, there's a Bible school right up the road where here's their solution to that because they've noticed and I've noticed, you know, I, I often tell them, I said, as soon as you're done scaring the wits out of people and, and uh, teaching them separation and there's some, some, something outside of you, um, bring them here and we'll heal them because they come out of their broken guys. They come out of there with so many mental and, and physical, emotional problems. Uh, a lot of them have so many digestive issues and, uh, isn't that weird that they go to Bible school, then all these things start happening? It's because they've believed now in something that they would, you and I would never come up with this on our own, that that God is so fragile that uh, um, he placed two trees and he knows the end from the beginning that everybody that eats of these things, two thirds of the earth, they're not going to say the magic words and they're going to be tortured forever. Unless somebody taught you that, guys, you would never in your heart come up with that story. So the story that there is a a power or an evil, something outside of you versus just the misuse of your own energy or power um, causes fear. And so <laughs> here's what the Bible school says. They're going, why am I, why did my health go away? Why, why did all of a sudden I struggle in my finances? Why are all these things happening to me? So here's what they say. Well, you weren't a threat to the enemy until you got saved. And now you're a threat. Oh, please guys. So the fear of this concept, their heart accepted it as real that, Oh my God, if I make one wrong, wrong move, so they, they battle guilt, they battle shame, which is the lowest energy forms, guys, which it causes, it invites the sickness and disease. When your cells are full of energy, your, your natural state is homeostasis. You live in abundance. You live in limitless. You live in joy. So anyway, we'll try heal all that for you today. But let's, let's, let's look at Satan first. Um, <clears throat> like I said, these are just more about, uh, uh, so here's Satan adversary, the, the superhuman adversary of God. Now this is Strong's guys. Strong's, I think, don't quote me exactly. It came out in the 1800s. The original Hebrew and Greek guys, like, like the Greek I was showing you, the exact same um, letters in imagery was uh, the first or second millennial BC. So this is two to 3,000 years in interpretation in Greek. Obviously, Hebrew, same thing. But 
Anyway, if you go look at it in, in its basics, the late Hebrew in Ar Aramaic and Arabic is to be remote. It's the unseen. It's the wilderness, guys. So this is the man in the unseen, the spiritual man. And if you look at the letters, <clears throat> it's noon, the cedar offspring, the life of Tet, which is the serpent, the number nine in Hebrew, and Shin, the fire or the passion of the covenant meal. So the Satan, guys, here's all it is. The, the, the snake was more cunning than all the animals in scripture because it was the idea that when we laid down our skin, the, the snake could shed its skin but not die. So as I've shown you a, a million times on these, the Greek god of Asclepius is to the world the god of healing. Until the fourth century when it started to be replaced by something bad as Christian uh, theology, but the serpent to everybody, that's why it says, unless the serpent be raised up um, <clears throat> on the pole like Moses in the remote place, the remote, to be remote, the hidden place, the wilderness within, guys, in the unseen realm, um, you shall not be healed. Well, the serpent, the endless life has to be healed in you. So you got noon, the seed that or offspring that produces life from the endless life, the, the last passion of the fire, the passion of God himself that produces endless life. When you lay down your skin, you don't die. That's literally Satan. So Satan's a good thing. Now let's tackle um, this idea. Uh, if you read 1 Peter 5 from the beginning, guys, maybe I'm going to go through 1 Peter 5, 8, but let me just show you. Um, hold on. Let me just show you. Let me read it in English first. So be sober-minded and alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Okay. Well, I have all kinds of problems with that because nobody would come up with that. If it's the father's great pleasure to give me his royal rule and reign, then it, it's really irrelevant. Now, some people go there like, yeah, he's defeated. No, it never was something to defeat, as I'll show you. It was the endless life, the other life, the spiritual man within you. So, um, and the reason I don't like something, the enemy, the adversary, because then you're not just effortlessly living. Guys, like a, the message I just recorded is our natural state is limitlessness and unshakable joy. Well, it's only sort of good news. Like you, you, you were really flawed because you were so dirty. God had to do a plan B that like my wife would say, she goes, that never settled in my heart. Like I, I didn't choose to be here. I, I was birthed. And so somehow something thousands of years ago passes on this original sin to me, which I showed you as a mistranslations of a left off being expelled out of the garden is a very different concept than Seeds were cast out of man in the garden. They don't interpret left off. God was never expelled out of a garden as it's something negative, guys. It was a seed cast or thrown or expelled, which I'll show you is, is in here too. So so let's look, look at be sober-minded and watch. If you go interpret it, it literally just says this. Um, there will be an arousal arising up in the discreet place. That's these first two words. I don't want to get into all that because... So there, basically, there's another arousal. There's another intimacy in the discrete place. Then we see the ho, and it's just this Greek letter O, but I've showed you this. Like if you go look at theos, which theos is this, this th, th. It's very similar, guys, to tet, the serpent. So it's then then you've, you've got this uh, ooh, so the shin, as I've shown you, and this os, but it's ooh, the i in, the, to perceive in the unseen, and o. The same thing as I've just shown you. But Theos, if you look at this, it's literally this, like the, the serpent sound, like you place your the, the tongue on your teeth. And now here's what's really interesting, guys. That's a, a lot like tet. So look at the look at the letter Theos. And as I've shown you this Greek alphabet, if you go to theta, right? It looks like that. Now watch this though. If you go to um you know, Hebrew for Christians, if you go to grammar, this is the ninth letter in Hebrew, tet. <clears throat> and it literally is created out of a zayin. So it's the finished work of man. If you go look at it, it says, uh, but look at this picture. It's missing a, a cross right there, but it's the circle with a line through it. This was the serpent, guys, it's just like theos. The letter tet is the ninth letter of the alphabet, having the numerical value of nine. The pictograph or the picture for tet looks like a snake coiled inside a basket, whereas the classical Hebrew script is constructed of the two preceding letters, Bob and Zayin. Well, Zayin is the crowned man. It's come to completion. There's a glistening glow and crown on top of his upright part, the male part of man. That's Tet. That's also Theos, guys. 
Isn't that interesting? So anyway, uh, so this Theos in the unseen, adversary of you. So let's look at adversary once, okay? The opponent, adversary, against, offset. Um, then you get all these, you know, ideas from the Western concept of, of it's a penalty, the sacrifice of Christ. Guys, the sacrifice, the male sacrifice is the seed released from man. So anyway, you get all these ideas, but let's look at this. So um, from anti-DK, let's look at DK first. <clears throat> it says justice, etc. Well, if a, if a judge declared something, a word was sent out, that's the, that's the law. That's really where they get this idea that the seed will not return void and there's going to be justice for everybody. But uh, um, if you go look at this, the original, um, <clears throat> it's really, it's kind of an interesting concept. It's a judicial decision from deck new O, a right. This is, this is going to be your right. This is going to be the final decision of you. But it's to show, to point out, show, exhibit, to teach, to demonstrate, to make known. To make known, this is this idea in Hebrew where there's a knowing. Knowing means I've had intimacy with. So there's going to there's gonna be another thing pointed out. There's going to be another thing taught. There's going to be another thing demonstrated. Okay? That's Dikneu. So if we go back, an empty. Now, it's interesting if you start looking at it. Here's, here's a left, which was the picture of the ox or the leader. And then you've got this noon, the, the life of Tao, the finished work, Iota. So tough, tau. So it literally is something else is going to be made known. And it's the, the, the life or the seed of the finished work that's released of the other one. So if you look at this opposite, corresponding, offset, in place of. Well, this is exactly what scripture says. Is there's going to be, and you can go through all these, but uh, in place of, instead of, in the room of. The contrast, the substitution. So literally all that's saying, guys, is there's going to be another knowing. So the physical has been supplanted or replaced, the substituted with the spiritual realm of you. And that's Haimon. And I, just for time, you can go through each of these letters if you want. But I just, I did it earlier. It says, to perceive the mighty waters that of the seed that produces life. So here's what it says. The serpent or the theos, there's going to be another arousal that's going to be shown and it's it's the seed of the mighty waters that produces life. Now let's look at this and then the comma diablos comma. So let's look at diablos, okay, which is translated as devil. Again, this it wasn't devil in English, but it's in your King James and everything else. The devil, diablos, the adversary. Again, the kings within you guys. There's nothing outside of you. This is the other man. This the the finished work in the spirit realm. Okay, so. Um, let's just go look at the root. It, it, the root is the English word devil. Um, no, Satan used by God. No, I just showed you what Satan was, guys. It was all good. It's really good. But let's look, let's dig into this word, diabolo. Okay. So properly to throw, it, literally all it means is um, uh, to throw, properly to throw across. Some You cast something across. Another casting. So dia. Um, <clears throat> Let's, let's look at balo first. Balo, to throw or cast. Guys, this is just what scripture says. There's going to be seeds cast. Unless you understand the garden and the seed, you won't understand anything that's going on in scriptures. They're parable of parables. So this is a throwing or a casting of the seed. Okay? And then let's look at dio on account of the seed cast. So it says literally dia, diablos. So I wrote, if you look at dia, so you've got dilet. Yod, Iota, and Aleph. So Aleph is the strength of the ox of the leader of the finished work, as he has been cast, as you entered into intimacy, the doorway or the threshold of isn't intimacy. So there's been a thorough casting because you entered into another intimacy, is Diablos, literally. And so <laughs> I said, over the doorway, the threshold, the strength of the ox is un unleashed. Um, and it's, it's because of this that it's been a successful casting. That's all it is, guys. Diabalo. As hos, it's it's uh, it's it's really interesting because you've got the last passion is os, the last sheen, the leon, the roaring. So let's look at roaring, roaring. 
So if you go look at roaring, the roar or the howl, it's only used once, this roaring or howl of Leon, the king. This is the, this is the seed that's been cast from the king, the roaring Leon. So if, if you look at this again, you've got uh, the creative power of God in the unseen, right, is hay right there. You've got Lamed, which is the, the, the shepherd's staff, the last seed is this roar of the last seed. It's the kingly seed that's been released. Prowls about seeking whom he may devour. <laughs> Let's look at this prowl, okay? It says, literally means to walk. Now, Hebrewistically, I walk. Hebrewistically, what is the Hebrewistic uh, meaning of walk? To tread over something. It meant I've tread over and had intimacy over them. That's the walk. As far as Everywhere your foot shall tread or walk, it shall be given you because you're replacing seeds there, guys. So anyway, if we go look at this, it literally means um, means where you have tread or had intimacy, complete, comprehensive. So let's look at this. From Perry, is comprehensive, completely surrounded your walk. So you've been completely immersed in the spirit, guys. Well, if I've been completely immersed and tread over by the spirit, I've been impregnated by God himself, as that's peripatio. That's prowls about seeking whom he may devour. All right. Now, I know this is, it's, it's to me, when I read this now, I'm like, because they started with separation and they started with, you know, by the time this gets translated and, uh, um, and then we actually start picking it up in the 16th century and 18th century with King James and Strong's guys, they've completely lost what these meanings are. So you've got Zitan seeking. So literally is, <clears throat> to aid the desire of the life of the last covenant. So <laughs> it's the desire of the last covenant to seek. There's a desire. There's a demand. Um, you've you've come to the end, of the, getting to know the bottom of the map, the terminal resolution. So it's almost like telestai. You've come to the end of something. And so you've obviously got the seed cast of the mighty waters of the covenant. The last seed is in Greek even. To whom to devour. And so to whom, if you go look at this, to Tina, so you've got Tau, uh, Iota, so which is Yod in Hebrew and 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 uh, Taf. So you've got <clears throat> the finished work of the covenant, and this is the noon, the life of Alpha, Aleph. So it's the last. It's it's the finished work is is the Tina. So you've got this finished work of the the covenant of the seed of God. <clears throat> This desire from the cynic work, you shall drink, is literally what it says, devour. So if you go look at this, kata, to drink down, swallow, devour, destroy, consume. Kata pino. So pino is to drink or to imbibe. This is the wedding feast of the lamb, guys. This is why they had the, my cup runneth over, right? This is why you see in the upper room, the shout of praise. Jesus has intimacy with who? Judas. Now, Western theology says, uh, they're in the upper room, guys. He he serves communion with Judas, the shout of praise, the lion again, lion of the tribe of Judah, the kingly covenant. So you got Pino to drink or imbibe, kata. Um, <clears throat> it's it's like down to the last. It's uh, it's this. It emphasizes down to drink down, having his head covered. So literally, it's this uh, to drink or consume. So what, what is all this, guys? In the English and Western theology, you've got this boogeyman outside of you, the Satan, the adversary, the devil, completely misinterpreting the whole story. It's talking about the last covenant meal, guys. It says, you shall drink down the seed of the serpent, the Theos, the God himself, that is endless life. You shall consume this marriage covenant. This is the last seed cast. This is the roar of the lion. This is the, there's another knowing. There's, an, there's the other knowing. There's a physical knowing when you had intimacy with your spouse. The seed of life is cast out, the physical realm. There's another knowing. You have intimacy with God himself, the other one. When you lay down this, this skin suit, the, the lion has shouted. The last trumpet has shouted. This is the roar of the lion, the declaration of the king, that you shall drink this covenant and produce the endless life. That's literally what it means, guys. So hopefully this, this helps you that you are unlimited. You are perfect. All these things about some power outside of yourself are misinterpretations, guys, 
of the intimacy of the other man. And hopefully that helps, guys. It's only good.